Welcome to the channel folks, Clunkers and Classics. We're still waiting on the silver paint to dry thoroughly before we paint the black. So in the meantime, we're doing what other work needs to be done and some upgrades here. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, we got to get this thing, this low horsepower factory 350, a little more oomph. And uh, first thing we're going to do is put headers on it. Now, it's got an exhaust leak down here, and it's probably this uh, heat flapper thing down there, or a donut gasket. Uh, other than that, the exhaust is new, but it's single exhaust from about, I don't know, from about here back, it's new. Got a new pipe, new muffler, new tailpipe. But when you do dual exhaust, you know, have to pretty much do away with that. Uh, I should have ordered it later, but I did order some uh, one chamber quote race mufflers and uh, a pipe kit so that it's not going to be here for a while probably not for this video but it might but uh I, it's doubtful but for now we got headers so let's open the box up this is from uh, dino vox from a sponsor they sent them to me they got a website which i will put on a link in, in the uh, in the description of this video and they said they'll give you 15% off so let's see what's in the box okay we got the uh, gaskets we got the uh, collectors oh we even got a spot for a uh, oxygen sensor two oxygen sensors and gaskets for them. Uh, okay. Now these are shorty headers because we did headers on the 76 Red El Camino a while back and a sponsor sent me long tube headers but they wouldn't fit. Bang, uh, as well as both sides but mainly the passenger side hitting the starter, hitting the frame, take them on and off 10 times, banging them around, denting them up, trying to put them on, and finally I said, no, that's it, they don't fit. So, they were nice enough to send me a set of shorty ones, but this is a different sponsor. Uh, so, where the collectors go here, and then we'll just have to make exhaust from here here back all the way back so anyway I don't know how much headers give it 20 extra 20 horsepower or something it's already got extra horsepower because the catalytic converters removed and the engines removed uh, been swapped to a 350 from a 305 factory uh, and it's probably had, I don't know if it come factory with a smog pump, but none of that crap's on there. Uh, who knows? But we're going to up the horsepower. We don't know how high, but uh, the biggest gain will be headers and dual exhaust. Then we're going to put a four barrel on it. We'll see what else we can get into. Okay, so that's one set. One, one of them. Oh, and you got the uh, header bolts too. These little ones go to the manifold, and those bigger ones will go to the collector here or here. What else? Oh, the other. So it comes with everything you need. You just got to build your own dual exhaust system after after you mount these. So. We'll see how much we can get done uh, getting these on there. Uh, 
it'll be pretty loud but okay that's the passenger side that's the driver's side okay it looks complete undamaged looks good okay now you can see it's getting dark because it was 102 102 today gonna be 103 tomorrow Whew, it's hot uh, so probably won't get a lot done tonight but we will definitely get after it tomorrow morning for a few hours uh, we got to take a lot of stuff off of this we got to take the AC compressor out of the way uh, and I take the dipstick out of the way got to undo the plug wires take the spark plugs out spark plugs will hit the headers uh, well first we got a we got a I got a couple couple of ramps I'm gonna drive it up on the ramps and cut the exhaust off we'll probably end up cutting all the exhaust but for now we'll just cut it off where at the bottom there and undo the two or three bolts that go up to the exhaust manifold get them out of the way well, we'll probably save that Y pipe for something. Maybe another car. Maybe that 78 Nova that I got over there has no exhaust on it. So maybe we'll save this Y pipe and the single exhaust for that car. Because that car has no exhaust whatsoever. Uh, and we may rob the four barrel and intake off of there. Put it on this one. And put this two barrel on that Nova because I don't think I'm gonna fix that Nova up or, or make it a hot rod but I'd like to at least get it running and driving to possibly sell okay so this passenger side would seem to be the easiest this uh, heat thing is just a couple of it is so dark probably best to go over this go over this in the morning uh just bolted to the manifold there now the only problems with headers on cars is the main thing is the bracket we'll we'll have to look i'll have to show you this it's the bracket when this is off in the morning when it's more light out the bracket from the power steering goes to that first exhaust manifold bolt to the head and with headers this is uh it goes to this bolt here and the thing with headers is it's too usually too thick and you got to use a different bolt or bracket or adapter or something other than that it's pretty pretty easy okay so uh yeah that's where we're at we're gonna at least get these headers on there then get everything put back together and uh we'll go from there okay well let me come back when i uh either get something done tonight or in the morning okay guys you hear the exhaust leak down here Now she's running a little bit rough, like it's got a vacuum leak or dead plug. So we'll, I'll show you these later. It, it is uh, pretty dark. But a bunch of these spark plug wires have been eaten by rats. Uh, they're not real bad, but we don't know how bad. We actually take them off. But I did buy a new set of spark plugs uh, wires. And I'm fixing to go get some spark plugs probably tomorrow or before this job is finished. And we're going to put in new plugs and wires and, uh, and see how it is. The carburetor's a little bit messed up too, but the engine, the engine's not shaking or nothing. Maybe it's just that exhaust that makes it sound bad. And uh, that carburetor it'll idle but you go to give it gas and it'll kind of uh, spitter sputter a little bit hesitate and all that stuff 
So the carburetors, you know, needs to be rebuilt or whatever. Plus it's probably old gas. Uh, 10 years ago when Dart brought me this car, I took out the gas tank and dumped it out. And when I was finished welding the trunk in and all that, I put in the gas tank and five gallons of new gas. And then that was it. So it's got five gallons of gas in there that's 10 years old. <laughs> and I didn't drain it out, I just mixed in. It could have evaporated out over 10 years, but I just put in five more gallons of good gas. So it's not smoking, so I don't think it's probably got too much bad gas in it, but it's probably got some. Oh, that's the other thing we need to do too. I don't think that this has a fuel filter that you can see going up. But we'll probably have to redo that fuel line. Uh, we'll put a four barrel on there. And I got a box of uh, see-through gas filters. And we'll put one on there and see if, you know, see how dirty the gas is. But uh, that'll be later on down the road. But anyway, uh, yeah, it's definitely got exhaust leak down there. Uh, could be a cracked manifold. Could be the donut gasket blown out. Could be that little uh, valve thing there screwed up. I got one. I got one laying over here. I thought I had. I just thought I had one laying around. I'll show it to you. But we gotta we gotta take it off anyway. I took the one off the. Uh, uh, El Camino. Anyway, I'll show you what it is. It's a closes the exhaust, and then when it heats up, it opens it, and all that stuff. And it's they stick. They stick closed, or they stick almost closed, and it bogs down the engine. That's what this sounds like. Sounds like it's stuck closed. Anyway, let me get a couple of ramps and get her up in the air, and uh, get under there, get some lights going, and. Uh, so we can cut that exhaust off and save it for the 78 Nova. So I'll be back. Okay, guys, we just developed the fuel leak. Right there, they got a rubber hose spliced into the steel line from the fuel pump. Then it'll come up to this line there. Uh, right there. This rubber line's probably messed up, so we gotta fix that because when I'm under here, I can see it spraying from the light. I don't know if you can see the spraying coming out of there. Okay, so anyway, here's the factory single exhaust system. The driver's side is coming around here then this goes straight up to the passenger side of the exhaust manifold and then it comes out here uh, the catalytic converter would have been what right in here or here right in here I believe a uh, bunch of booger welds there like I said it's awful quiet other than one we'll figure it out when we get it out get it off so then it comes and then this is the new pipe here welded in so that's all new newish <laughs> art kept this thing up you see the transmission is painted blue there uh they said he had the transmission rebuilt new tires new exhaust he he really did keep it up he just that he he thought he was all ready for some paint and body work but uh a little bit more than he wanted I guess wanted to pay for okay so I think what we'll do we don't know how the Nova see I just thought of this of putting this exhaust system on the Nova because it has none it doesn't have any of these pipes can you see the spring over there I have to fix that before I start it up again um <laughs> I don't want to be breathe, breathing it in either I think what we'll do is cut it right about where this curve is. So we'll cut it right in here. 
and uh, just take out this section for now tie this back one up later on we'll take off the whole tailpipe muffler and this pipe here but for now we'll just cut it off right in here right before it bends because like I said this stuff here probably won't fit the Nova the Nova will probably just stick on a stick on a glass pack or something right there okay so you can see the indentation in the uh, transmission cross member for the dual exhaust and the driver's side doesn't have it and we're not spending hundreds of dollars buying a one for dual exhaust uh, could I take it out cut it out make something here so a pipe would fit on the driver's side yeah probably but we're probably not going to do that uh, I got exhaust pipe kit coming with a whole bunch of different angles and curves and lengths and I'll see if I can get it as close as I can to the bottom of that. I just don't want it scraping and just a straight pipe right underneath that. Uh, so it doesn't uh, uh, hit anything. Well, we'll see what happens with the kit. But yeah, I have no intentions of buying the right cross, dual exhaust cross member for it. Okay, uh, you, know, you know, we had to do that on that El Camino. So anyway, I'm going to cut this with a sawzall, buzz it there, and then get an impact and take off the two or three bolts up here and on the driver's side and drop this whole Y-pipe section down and drag it out of there. And uh, we'll take a look at it. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, guys, nothing's going easy. That's a Y-pipe. I had to cut this pipe right here. This is the passenger manifold. Uh, <laughs> you can see one stud came out. No, it broke. And then these are all friggin' really small and melted something. I, I, I came across the same problem on these uh, exhaust bolts. Now, they're supposed to be 9 16 but then again, they could be 14 millimeters since this came off a truck. But I doubt these are truck manifolds, but it could be the truck bolts. Uh, but they weren't rounded off or nothing. It's just that uh, 14 or 9 16 would, would just spin, and a 14 barely caught. And luckily, I, uh, well, I, had a whole, I have a whole bunch of different old sockets. I finally find, found a 14 that was loose, but it barely caught it. It's like it's in between half inch and nine sixteenths, you know, or 13. It needs a 13 and a half millimeter uh, socket. So that was kind of strange. Uh, I, I think it must have been something to do with the salt. Him driving on the beach all the time, it must have just worn off. Anyway, I found the exhaust leak right here. When they put the manifolds gaskets on, uh, this one here folded. <laughs> See, they put that gasket on there, and it folded in. They bolted it any in anyway, so it uh, well they didn't probably notice it. So that's so that's where it was leaking from. And then this is the little we don't know. I don't know if I'm going to take that off or not, but that's a little flapper in there that could be jammed up in there as well. Uh, or this little vacuum, see this bolts on. We're going this way. See this bolts on here like that. Then this little rod goes down to the flapper. And uh, you know if that vacuum doesn't work, then it's not gonna, it's not gonna pull the pull this flapper open and closed. It could be stuck. So who knows if that's working, or if there was vacuum going to it. Anyway, that's they always have problems with that crap. That's why you just take it all off and do away with it all. Uh, so anyway. 
got the passenger side. Like I said, I had to take the spark plugs out. Uh, there's a. These usually have two coolant sensors, one there, one on the other side. Uh, so I'll get some sandpaper, clean that gasket, that head up where the gaskets go, make sure that's nothing sticking to it. Uh, spark plugs look like they were in there since the beach days. All rusted on the outside. They don't look too bad though. How good you can see, but they're all rusty on the outside. So anyway, got the passenger side. Driver side is going to be a little bit harder. I think I'll wait till tomorrow to do that because I got to take off the AC and screw around. So anyway, uh, we'll see y'all tomorrow. Well, guys, next morning we got problems. <laughs> These headers are for an LS engine. Their description said that it was for, you know, all these different year old school small block. They do have headers for LS conversions for Nova, Chevelles, and all that. Uh, of course, I didn't order that. I ordered these ones that the description said it fits old school small blocks. And it had all the years, 60 something to 77 chevelle uh but it doesn't these are the the round holes i should have noticed that probably some of you guys noticed that when i first took it out of the box i didn't uh but yeah it needs to be needs to be those that deal there not this that's for an ls engine so I just emailed them. Uh, I don't know what they'll say. I looked through all their uh, headers. I got the headers for a lot of cars and trucks. And the only Chevy ones I've seen, the pictures look like this. I didn't see any pictures that looked like that. Uh, So I'm not sure what to do. Um, I got it all jacked up, torn apart. Now we got to wait. How, I don't know how long for new headers. Um, I got those other headers from that other sponsor. Right here, those long tube that never fit the El Camino. But I'm pretty sure they're not going to fit this one either. In fact, I know they're not. The El Camino and Chevelle frame is the same up front. It hit. It hit down here. Down there in the starter. And I beat the hell out of it. So, uh, I don't know, figure something out. But yeah, I got this side pretty much ready to put the header in. But now we're <laughs> we're screwed and I can't put that back on. Uh yeah, these are gonna be absolutely no use. Okay, let me figure out what I want to do. I may tear down this side. We gotta take that tear down this side anyway. In the meantime, I don't know whether I should just order some eBay headers that are going to fit real quick. See if they can get here quick, quicker, instead of waiting on emails. Uh, just thinking if they're sending more headers, what I could put them on. I think all my cars got headers on them. Well, that 78 Nova, put headers on it. Maybe that's what I'll do. Okay, let me think about it and I'll be back. Okay, guys. Uh, this company's website doesn't seem to show headers 
with the picture for these manifolds. I think all they got is LS conversion headers. That's what these are. So uh, I don't know. I haven't heard back from the from his email. I just emailed them. Uh, so I went ahead and ordered a cheap set of uh, headers off of eBay. Uh, they said within four to eight days or something. So it's going to have to sit here like this for that long. Jesus. Uh, and then if they do happen to have some and send it, I'll use it for that 78 Nova. I was going to see if these ones fit. These are the, one, the last ones from a different sponsor. Let's see where I beat the hell out of them. I was going to see if these fit the Nova. Because they just told me to keep them. Uh, so, anyway, we can put their headers on on the 78 Nova. Um, yeah, I mentioned the exhaust leak was because <laughs> this gasket, but I, I can't find the other gasket. There's one there. I can't find this one. So I think that one was missing too. I thought it was stuck on the man on the head, but it wasn't. This thing here seems to be free, the little flapper. I'm not going to bother cutting them off just to look. Uh, had one have one right here off the El Camino to show you. Uh, that, that's what it looks like there. See, and this opens and closes. And if it's stuck closed, and the only exhaust getting through is through them four little holes. Uh, but anyway, they're mostly, from, if they're up north there, they rush shut. They've been sitting a while, they'll rush shut and your car will run like garbage. So, um, we'll go ahead and break down. I stuck those plugs in there a little bit just to keep shit from getting into the cylinders. Um, uh, we're gonna just continue on. So I went in there and ordered some eBay headers. I'm wasting time here because it's gonna be 102 today. Here's the sun line right here. I stand here it's right on my head so I'm wasting valuable working time here uh, I thought about doing the four barrel swap but I can't really run it to test it and everything till the headers are on so let's go ahead and get this side ready uh, I think on the El Camino I had to disconnect the AC lines here. I thought I could unbolt it and set it over there, but I believe, uh, yeah, this line wasn't. Uh, so I just checked the pressure. There's no pressure in it. It's all there. Belt's on. The belt's on, but it's adjusted all the way, all the way back. Uh, we'll just leave that belt on there because it's the third belt uh, it seems to work I mean not make no noise or not misaligned or anything like that uh, so anyway let me take the AC compressor off because we got to get it them bolts and everything down there oh that's the other thing that doesn't fit is this bracket for the AC does not fit on headers uh, that's the only problem. And you got to take off the, uh, I believe the old dipstick right there. Anyway, the it, pipes disconnected from the manifold. So basically we'll take this off, take the dipstick off, I think. May not have to until we put the headers on. We'll leave it on until we do the headers and then just unbolt that manifold uh like i said might be a problem with them bolt heads there but anyway let me just do that and uh 
I'll be back. Okay, guys, I just got the compressor suspended right there for now uh, without removing. If I remove that bolt, I can just take it completely out of the way, but I don't have to right yet. So here's the uh, power steering bracket right here. That's, that's a problem with headers. Okay, that, and then this bracket here, which bolts onto the back of the AC right up in here. Uh, hate to just leave it out, but there, there ain't much you can do. Uh, I can show you when I can put the headers on. Uh, but anyway, let me, I'll have to take that bolt out of there, take this whole bracket out, just so I can get this out. So let me take off these bolts here, and then the uh, spark plug wires, and then this is the temperature gauge here. It's all kind of, hopefully it still works. Uh, and then we just lift that out of there, I believe. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, guys, got the driver's manifold off. Uh, I'm going to show you that bracket. See, this one we're going to have to do something with. Uh, this went all the way down in there. Uh, I thought that might be cut off. I thought there was a hole there to bolt that on there. But like I said, this motor's been swapped and they just did it the quickest way. But anyway, you need that bracket from there to there or else that pump's going to be flopping around. Uh, I just checked the oil. What did I do with the dipstick? It's full, so no leaks or nothing. <laughs> Been sitting 10 years. Uh, oh yeah, I do got an oil and an oil filter. We will uh, change the oil on this. And here's those spark plug wires I said was eaten up by rats. I don't know if they were arcing or anything, but you can see them here. We can definitely change them over. I already got them. I bought them a while back. I just didn't buy spark plugs. But basically, I need the headers, and I don't have them. So uh, we'll go ahead and change the oil right now. Um, and we'll figure out what we want to do next. Uh, I need to pour 15 all underneath the car. Everything got all rusty under there from sitting. And this, uh, well, I guess I could show you. Mentioned in another video, I used this flooring glue. And stuff there, and it's just all flaking off. I pressure washed it a while back. But yeah, these are all new floors I put in 10 years ago. That's just a little surface rust. But we need to clean all that up. And, uh... Right here, it's almost all peeled off. There was a big chunk of it. Was it? Right here, that was the flooring glue. Because I had primed and uh, put some rubberized undercoating spray on the wheel wells, and the next day or something, the rubberized undercoating just all peeled off. And I thought, shit, I need something to stick. So I <laughs> happened to have that flooring glue and uh, just slopped it all on there. Uh, but anyway, we're, I'll take a, a scraper, scrape all that off, start pour 15. Yeah, I just patched them in there. Patched them all in, they were all, they were all rotted out. Uh, I guess we can take, go ahead and and uh, cut the rest of this exhaust off. I'll probably jack up the back and put it on jack stands because this video, I just planned on putting them headers on there and just leaving them open headers till I ordered some pipes and mufflers and then make put that in another video. But uh, those pipes and mufflers will be here before the headers. So... 
it looks like on this video it may be long guys but we're going to uh, do the headers pipes exhaust everything all in one video so <clears throat> yeah i had tied this up here out of the way but yeah we'll go ahead and jack the back up and take the brand new muffler and tailpipe off there so we may use it for the nova but probably not now i you know this this broke a stud off here too so instead of and these are all nasty two busted off here i think no i couldn't even get these two off so i don't think we can use these for the nova i do have another set that came out the gold car but i'd have to weld this pipe back onto that one or see if those headers there work but anyway, that'll be for another day. We need to put exhaust on it and then switch, take the four barrel intake off and put it on this one. I got the other intake and two barrel from the El Camino, which I think is probably a better carburetor than that one. That one hesitates and sputters a lot. This one's not as bad. Uh, we can put that two barrel intake on the Nova. I'm not going to waste a four barrel and a four barrel intake on it. So anyway, yeah, I'll, I'm going to get up under there, take the rest of the exhaust off, uh, scrape them, do some pour 15 under there, and do an oil change. So I'll be back. Okay, guys. Here's the exhaust cut out. This went up over the axle, so I just cut it there. But yeah, it's pretty much all new stuff, but you can use the... Uh, muffler for something i'm sure and probably these pipes uh this pipe set came in this was shipped out of texas so it came in like two days it was 72 dollars two and a half inch uh two main pipes there all kinds of stuff there so we'll figure out what we can do once the mufflers are here and the headers are on we'll We'll figure out what we can do with that, but I think it's a lot better than going up to uh, O'Reilly's and buying a little section of this pipe for 20 bucks every time for $72 shipped. Uh, I think it's a pretty good deal. And we'll have lots of extras left over for other projects. Okay, uh, I haven't got around to changing the oil. I'll do that here in a little bit. Uh, there's some pour 15 and a brush. I'll buy them in these little six packs. So I just been under here scraping and sanding. Uh, there's the rear floor. There's the front floor. Scraped all the loose stuff off and just kind of scuffed it up a little bit. And uh, I'm just going to do this side and scuffed up this frame a little bit. I probably should do all over there and all over there but I'm just going to do this section for now uh, mainly concentrate on the floors and then we'll do I'll get over there and do the driver's side at some point but uh yeah anyway I'm going to brush some pour 15 on there and I'll be back okay guys just did an oil change to it just got this Walmart brand uh, I don't know what the Walmart brand oil filter for a Chevy 350 is because they only their books only go down to 2001 or something, maybe 90 something, but definitely not 77. But I knew pH 30 was the frame one, so yeah. New filter, new oil. There's the old oil. She's black, but from sitting 10 years so uh she's all ready all ready for the road with a new oil change oh i got the uh i used about a half of one of them little cans it's all dripping there you gotta watch out for all that get it on your skin and everything but anyway yeah it's all painted here painted there painted this frame along there 
uh, need to do the other side in the front and the back <laughs> so I'll do that here if doesn't get too hot if not I'll do it tonight or in the morning okay I'll be back okay guys I didn't record anything yesterday I got under here and sanded and poor 15 on this side of the floor did the other side the other day you got to kind of do it and you can see all the little spots of stuff there you're trying to do it without getting it on your skin and rolling around in it and shampooing your hair with it so it's kind of hard to do it you know like all at once okay so i got all this uh back part kind of scuffed down you can see i use some of that stuff as sealer well i think i actually use sealer or silicone and some of that stuff over top but anyway i scraped all the loose stuff off scuffed it with some sandpaper same with the frame same with the gas tank uh all this area there uh i guess i did some of this back bumper but we're gonna finish off the bumper then this side here and up there and i didn't sand all the brake drum or the brake area there I don't know what's going on with that rear differential cover. I scraped some of it off and it's, I don't know if it's, it looks like it was chrome and somebody painted it silver, but I don't know. I scraped some stuff off the rear end. We're going to check the rear end fluid. It's probably good. I don't see no leaks or anything. But uh, yeah, I don't know if you can see underneath there. So what I'm going to do after I pour 15 this, well, except for the gas tank. Uh, I'm gonna use that truck bed coating. It's the same price as, as uh, undercoating. And uh, I'm just gonna spray a coat of that all, all on the bottom. Probably not on the frame or ju just on the floor. Spray that stuff on there like it would be for undercoating. But uh, yeah, we're gonna get all up in here. So when I come back and show you, this will all be black. And I may, uh, not today, but because that poor 15 takes a while to dry. Uh, maybe tomorrow or something, I'll uh, mix up some black paint and just spray everything black over top of that poor 15. Protect it even more. Okay, so... Yeah, it's going to look pretty good under here. Yeah, it's probably best to do this. Well, mainly back there before I do the exhaust anyway. It's kind of hard to get all that area with the exhaust in the way. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, guys. Let me show you what I got done so far. Got all this poor 15 under here. I don't know how good you can see it's dark. Or getting dark. Uh... I'm thinking about mixing up some paint and throwing some paint on there. Uh, I didn't do. I did everything but the rear end. It's still got some grease and stuff on it. Okay, started. Uh, I'm gonna spray these on the uh, floor panels. Like I said, it's just about as much as uh, regular undercoating, truck bed coating. Just picked that up at Walmart. Uh, I got about half of this done scraping and painting last night and kind of see the before and the after and I'm going to do all up here this frame and the bottom of this bumper and everything so I get all the front end done uh, you can see I got half the drive shaft done uh, okay uh, I ordered them headers, what, three days ago? I ordered them, like, Friday, but, of course, it was the weekend, so nothing happened Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Now it's Monday, and uh, all that's happened is they sent the uh, uh, tracking number. The item hasn't been picked up, 
it's just they, they issued a tracking number and estimated uh, for Saturday. It's coming all the way from New Jersey. So uh, it doesn't look like these headers are going to be here for a while. Uh, this will be a two-week video if I <laughs> keep waiting. But we're doing stuff that needs to be done anyway, uh, like the poor 15 stuff. I need to check the brakes again. Uh, originally, this back half was empty. I filled it up a while back, and now it was empty again. I cannot find any leaks on the car. I think, I think it's coming out the bottom of the back seal here. But of course, I I degreased it a little while ago. So anyway, I refilled this up and it's going to pump the shit out of the brakes. If it starts leaking out the back, then it's going to be this master cylinder, and I'm going to take the one off the parts car because I believe the brakes were good on that. I'll just take this whole thing off the parts car and put it on here. Okay, uh, and then we can bleed the brakes. Other than that, it's, oh, then the four barrel swap. We'll figure out something to do on that. It's going to make that another video, but uh, anyway, let me think about it and I'll be back. Okay, guys, I want to show you something I got in. Now, this is from a sponsor, too. Uh, Vivor. They've sent me a bunch of stuff. They sent me that little car port that I use for Nikki's pen. Uh, that uh, welding machine or uh, spot dent puller machine. Some other stuff there. Uh, socket sets. So this I picked out. I need some floor jacks. So hopefully they can send me some regular floor jacks. But I bought this one. This is an... Or, uh, got it from them this is an electric this is everything you need it comes in this uh case here carrying case uh that's a jack electric jack electric impact and they even give you sockets and they give you a little headlamp right now what's good about this is no batteries there's no batteries to go dead, charge up, worry if they're good, and all that. It actually hooks up to your car battery. Well, you can hook it up to your car battery or a cigarette lighter. Uh, this cigarette lighter here just pulls out, and then this little deal here goes to your battery. So you hook your clamp on to... I'll show you again here in the, uh, in the daylight when we use it. Uh, Okay, so you plug it in and turn it on, and then it, it also has a built-in air pump here. So this this little deal here can air up your tire. Okay, so it's a built-in air pump compressor, and then this is all your uh, all your little accessories to air up your tire okay so you turn it on and uh, click up you see it going up you click it again to stop it uh, then down It's got a light in the front of it, right there. So you're going to see your light. Now this is this is for isn't really for shop use. It's to put in the back of a car, like this one. If you don't have a jack, lug wrench, uh, anything like that. Okay. So it's if you're stuck on the side of the road. There's your light there. There's your headlight, headlamp. Uh, deal put on your head so you can see when you're taking off the lug nuts. There's the compressor. Okay, we'll turn that off. And then you unplug that. Okay. Then you want to uh, 
plug this into the lug wrench there. Now this says not to use for more than 10 minutes. So that's why I'm saying it's not for shop use. So this same thing, it's hooked to your car battery. And it actually, you'll hear it and all of a sudden you'll hear a loud click and that's when it actually gets uh, pressure and knocks your lug nuts off. Right there. And you push the little button there for Okay, and there's actually four. That goes in that way, and it goes in this way too. The deal's right in the middle. And then that one's same thing. So there's four different sizes. So we're gonna use this. Uh, what I'm gonna do, I don't know if I'll do it right now. I still gotta pour 15 the bottom of this. Uh, we're gonna bring over the red 76 El Camino because I bought two new tires for it, but I put them on this one instead. And the ones that were on here were like new, still got the little nipples on them, uh, but they're 10 years old. So they're right there. I'm gonna bring the El Camino around. We're gonna use this jack and lug wrench, jack it up, take off the tires and mount those tires. So we'll actually see how it works. Now it even gives you gloves too. It's not very much. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. I believe there's a you know discount and all that stuff. So uh, yeah, when I come back, we'll we'll use the machine. It seems like a perfect little thing to stick in your trunk of your car if you gotta change a flat and all that. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, guys, let's try this machine out. Got the 76 El Camino here. Just got a couple of clamps to, uh, or, uh, deals, clamp on the battery. And then just run your cord. We'll stick it underneath the frame here. Right about there. And then we'll push up. We're going to change over the two front tires. These rims were originally on that Scooby-Doo van. And I took the rims off of this, uh, this one and put it on the van. And the front tires are really bad shape. The rear ones are pretty bad too, but at least they hold air. This one I had to air up. Okay, she's going up. those tires are a little bit bigger than these ones so okay we'll stop that let's find the right lug nut for this that one there okay so we'll unplug this plug this into the wrench and which way we need to go here we go this way reverse click to
Okay, well that's all there is to it. Seems like a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool deal. What I'll probably do is whatever car I drive, I'll just lift this set out of the trunk of whatever car I have it in and uh, put it in there. Go on trips or something. A lot easier than sitting there with a regular jack and lug wrench. Okay, I guess that's it for that machine. Let me uh, swap this tire, do the other side. Get those two tires on there. Uh, like I said, they came off here. A little bit of uh, weather cracking, but uh, not too bad. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, guys, I got the two tires on there. Uh, yeah, I need to paint them silver. I need two front trim rings, too. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'll put a link in the description and stuff. Like I said, it's from Vivor. Uh, pretty good shit I got from them so far. Everything seems to work. It seems to be good quality. Okay. Uh, last night, I finished off painting all this with 415 under here. All under the bumper frame, everything. Uh, the only areas I really need to do is once the front tires are off, I get at that that area there. <coughs> and I wanted to say that Art did really keep this car up. All the I probably got paint over it, but all these uh, sway bar bushings, end links, uh, ball joint, you know, little covers, everything looks good on it. It really only has 69,000 miles on it, or he's had all this replaced at some point. Because uh, everything looks good. Even the uh, A-frame. I put a little paint up here. See, even the A-frame bushings aren't too bad. A few little cracks, but... I'm put a little paint there. Uh... Okay, well, let me uh, figure out what I want to do next, and I'll be back. Okay, guys. Okay, so this car looks like the Malibu. It just had a 352 barrel. And we swapped, I bought a new intake because the old in, uh, four barrel intake I had was so gummed up and shitty looking, I don't think I could ever fix it or clean it properly and it was worth 120 bucks to get a aftermarket one. Okay, so what we're gonna do is take that four barrel and intake off the 78 Nova and uh, put it on that Malibu, but... But what we're gonna do, see this Nova, I had it running, but it run, it shakes. It doesn't knock, smoke, it just shakes. Like something's out of out of whack on it. Okay, so this carburetor is Nettlebrock and it's off that 82 Silverado. On the 82 Silverado I had bought a new knockoff quadrajet, same as the 82 El Camino. So, uh, there's an 81 Silverado, 81, 82 Silverado. So I, I put it on that truck because that truck had a little bit of a shake too. Uh, well, not, not bad. Just anyway, uh, this engine just doesn't run right. Um, I'm pretty sure it was probably just a, a 305 two barrel, but I'm not quite sure. 
I can't see the numbers because of this uh, hook is in the way. Uh, I don't feel like trying to clean off the back numbers. So I'm assuming it's a 305, but hell, it could be a 350. Who knows? But this is the same carburetor that is on currently on the uh, El, the red El Camino. This was put on there just trying to get the damn thing running right, but just in the timing, swapping around the spark plug wires, nothing. It just it just shakes like somebody have the skipped a tooth in the timing gears or somebody put it on wrong or I don't know what it is but I don't think I'm ever going to fix this up and then the transmission went out I made it one lap around the property and the uh, well it was so low on transmission fluid and I didn't have any I drained some out of a Ford put it in there made it one lap around and then it quit moving so eventually I'm going to change the fluid in it uh, if that don't work, then I have another transmission from the 78 El Camino I can put in here. Uh, so anyway, right now this runs perfectly smooth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this carburetor off. I'm going to put it on this El Camino. And if it runs exactly the same, then we know the carburetors are good. So then later on i'm going to take this intake off because it looks like a non-egr the other one i took off that el camino had a big egr thing here and it was all nasty this one looks kind of factory but there's orange underneath of it uh so orange underneath that the 78 should be a blue engine uh or, well, I'll have to, because we're swapping this Nova over to a two-barrel. So I'm going to use the intake and the two-barrel that came off of this car and put it on here. Okay, because I don't think I'm ever going to fix this up or make a race car out of it. Uh, I already have one. I don't think I'll make a hot rod or anything out of it. So, But I want to keep it so it runs and drives. This, it just needs too much too much stuff and uh, a lot of the stuff is not available door panels all the plastics windshields broke it's a custom concourse thing so it's missing all the trim uh, missing the covering that goes well it was a big vinyl top thing over it like uh, I'm not putting that back on and then this is all screwed on so trying to, uh, to convert it back to a regular nova uh i don't have the pieces for it so it's just to me it's just not worth it uh and then you know the paint and body it's not too bad but it's a lot of rust and anyway i'll probably just sell it as is but anyway i don't want to go too much rambling this video is pretty long but i'm trying to get some stuff done because we got to end this video pretty soon uh it's going to be another five or six days before the exhaust and headers and stuff get here so we can finish all that up on one video we're going to do the headers and the whole exhaust system and maybe the four barrel swap we'll see how this carburetor goes so anyway i'm going to swap these carburetors over and i'll be back okay guys here's the carburetor off the nova Runs great. Okay, so this is the carburetor that came off that, which came off that Silverado. Uh, I kind of noticed it before, but that's why I wanted to check on that carburetor. The four barrel's not opening here. It runs great, idles and accelerates and everything, but this four barrel doesn't open. And there's something, that's a two barrel, this four barrel here. 
there's there's a couple of pieces of linkage missing here uh, that other carburetor comes out of this thing and has a couple linkages and then there's no choke on this one there's a choke on that one don't really need it but so I'm not sure whether to use this or not because uh, I don't think the four barrels can open uh, I messed around with it messed around with it but I'm not sure what's going on with it but anyway that would be the four barrel we we'll use for the for this Chevelle uh, unless I decide to buy another one might buy another quadrajet or I could put that one on the Silverado and take that new quadrajet from there and put it on here I don't know uh, but anyway we'll save that for another day we do know both carburetors work and that there's something wrong with that Nova engine that shakes it's out of time is that something's out of whack with it somebody screwed something up with it well anyway guys I think we're gonna end the video on that I know it's been long and we didn't really get a lot accomplished we just kind of bounced around but we did get it all pour 15 underneath there got the exhaust off here uh, getting around to getting a four barrel and intake putting on here uh, so we'll end it at that and the next video on this we'll we'll get all that done okay so uh, subscribe if you haven't uh, like comment share all that stuff and we'll see y'all next video thanks everybody for watching